Anything else you want to add to that? I mean, we can talk about the transgender uh, stuff if you want to. Sure. I, um, yeah. I I don't know. Um, from I, my perspective, I like the idea of families having. Um, I, I've yet to find a family that agrees with everything that I agree with. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but I respect their right to 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 raise their family however they want to. Yeah. Um, what about you? Well, yeah, and so when it comes to my own daughters and I'm raising them in a second grader and a fourth grader. And when it comes to just the LGBT community and acknowledging their existence and how I treat them and my own personal views are to treat them the same as I treat straight society in that I try to make it clear. It's no big deal. Um, so for instance, we're currently watching, uh, um, Dancing with the Stars on Disney Plus. And yeah, there's a trans contestant on it, uh, Shangela. And yeah, my daughters see Shangela. And, you know, during rehearsal, it's the guy, I forget his name, um, you know, practicing. And then, you know, when performing, it's Shangela. And so I just make it clear that. How do you, how do you say that name again? Shangela. Shangela. Like Angela. I have sh- garbage of names. Yeah. I, Does Angela dance? Yeah, she's um, doing. You know, fairly well. Um, yeah, I, right. I, I'm impressed because, yeah, <laughs> um, better than some of the other celebrities, but I'm a okay. Wayne Brady fan, so that's who I'm rooting for. Uh, but it's like, okay, you know, my daughters, they had come across uh, the drag queens before, but um, it was just kind of like, you know, they didn't rec- you know realize it, but here it's, yeah, they, and I just simply make it clear. Yeah, some guys, you know, enjoy dressing up you know, in women's clothing and makeup and all that as, you know, a character, just as other people dress up as things and, and as an entertainment vessel. Um, you know, like a magician dresses as up as a magician or, you know, a mime dresses up as a mime. And it's no different. It's an entertain. It's a style of entertainment that of, you know, men dressing as women, that's drag and vice versa. You know, women can dress in as men in drag it's just a form of entertainment. That was, you know, totally normal to them then. They, they, it, it wasn't something that I needed to go any further than that because really the, no, it's not necessary and there's really nothing then unusual about it to them. It's just, oh, okay, that's a person dressed as a woman and that's for entertainment purposes. No big deal. Um, we were listening to... We listen to a lot of podcasts, and this was several years ago. We were listening to one called Two Princes, and it was an interesting story. And about, you know, a couple chapters in, it dawned on me, I think I know where the story is going. And, yeah, at the end, the two princes kiss, and, you know, they fall in love. And, you know, the look on my daughter's face was, like, kind of shocking, like, oh, my gosh. But I just simply said, yeah, you know, just like a prince and a princess can fall in love, so can two princes. And, you know, it's... Treating it the same as you would treat any other person, I don't think is that difficult. Um, and I, I think that that's healthy for our communities in order to just be accepting of everybody because that's all anybody is asking for is just to be accepted for who they are. And I don't, I don't struggle with it as a parent. Um, and I, so that's, my general take on it is it's not a issue that I am threatened by or anything like that. I like the idea that you saw something, Mm -hmm. you handled it. You, you within your role, within your family, um, you, told your kids and taught your kids as you saw fit. Uh, I respect every parent's right to do that. Um, I know we've had lots of conversations about this issue outside <laughs> the polling. Um, and I think we both agree that a, there needs to be room for everyone in society. Um, we also kind of talked about how, I think we talked about how um, people shouldn't have People should be able to, to be free to have their own thoughts on it mm-hmm. and, and to to raise their families. Because this is kind of a, you know, 
it's a hot button issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, from my perspective, I think families, that is something that should be ha- handled within the family. What do you think? Yes and no. It is straight culture handled within the family or is that in the public realm as well? Like, so my view when it comes to schools, it should all be treated equally. If you can have a story in which a kid, you know, has two parents, a mom and a dad, it's really fine if the kid has is a single mother or, okay, you know, divorced parents with, you know, separate families or gay parents or, you know, whatever, just treat it all the same. You know, none of it should be prohibited or banned by the state. Just the, the demographics of the characters involved should be irrelevant to public policy, in my opinion, or, or just, you know, that it, but to it, me, but, but it is relevant in that sense because oh. I mean, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're on a roll. Um, but you're saying that you want it all to be treated the same, right? Yeah. Um, that's because you believe it's all the same. Right? Yeah. What if there is a parent that doesn't believe it's all the same or believes, do whatever you want. This is how we believe um, things should be. Yeah. But then their kids go to a school where what they have told their you have these two families, yeah. your family and another family, mm-hmm. and what you believe wins out is being taught to both the kids, mm-hmm. both sets of kids. Is there, one, would that be fair? And is there a solution where you don't, one family doesn't win over the other? So as far as the government's role, I don't see how the government can intervene to say that these characters are allowed and these are not based on concerns for having no parents object. Because if it's an interracial couple and there's a family that does not you know, want their kids exposed to that, should they be using the government to prohibit that you know, fictional character from appearing in a story at a school or should the government based on equal treatment under the law treat even fictional characters you know have those protected classes of race religion gender where a the content cannot be prohibited or or restricted based on those protected classes of those characters so you know, it's two dads, if that's not allowed, but if you were to change one dad with, you know, a, a mom, then it is allowed. That's the government discriminating based on gender. I don't view that as a proper role for government, regardless of what the, you know, the parents want, because otherwise it's the heckler's veto. Any parent can object for any reason. And what is the school supposed to do? Like you end up with no stories being allowed because how do you prevent a family from objecting to, you know, a straight, fa- you know, mom and dad family, you know, characters. Like if, if somebody objected to them, do you have the government then prohibit those stories? I, I just, it opens the door to an impossible standard that, yeah, it, it's the government should treat all equally even if they're fictional characters, they shouldn't be discriminating based on those protected classes. Do you think there should be at least an age range where we're not focused on that kind of stuff? So focused on versus, and, and that's yeah. where, yeah, I, I don't think that it should be a requirement of second grade to include stories that have diverse you know, family situations. I don't think the government should be prohibiting it either, though. I, I, again, I would rather trust the teachers in this instance to know what is best. And so then, now you always have the content itself, which can go beyond what is acceptable or what should be allowed. And the government should be allowed to restrict the content, the actions involved. But 
to me, the, the test I use is if you were to change the demographics of the characters, would all of a sudden that content be okay? If so, then the government should stay out of it. If the content would be wrong, regardless of the demographics of the characters, you know, even if it was straight family stuff, then, then that's a problem and the content can be prohibited at that point. So that's my safeguard mechanism. I don't think it should be, you know, forced into the classroom, but I'm willing to trust the teachers to find the stories that they feel are best. I just came from uh, conferences with my fourth grade, grade daughter's teacher, and she had mentioned that, you know, one of the stories, there was um, the, the dad and mom were divorced, you know, and kind of like an infidelity situation or something that most of the kids didn't k- pick up on. It was just like a single sentence or something. But, you know, my daughter picked up on it and asked a question about it. And just, you know, that was mentioned during parent-teacher conferences. And it's like, yeah. Now, there's very, it's very easy for that content to cross a line, but I trust my daughter's teacher that she chose a story that, yeah, I mean, it's okay. And, and yeah, if I were to object as a parent, I'm allowed to object, but I can't force the school to abide by all of my objections. I have to accept that my way is not going to be the controlling factor in the situation. I think you bring up some pretty good points. And, and this is a situation where it's pretty difficult yeah. uh, to, to have a solution that is that is fair. Um, one of the things that I think is that uh, people need to have the freedom to change. Okay, You're not going to get anyone to, you're never going to change someone's mind by telling them what to think. Um, it, freedom basically... Um, or change stands at the at your door and knocks, and it's up to you to open up the door and let it in, or else you're never going to have a, a change, regardless of, of what it is. Um, and this is a, a that would be a kind of a difficult thing here um, to have to kind of be in a position of some parents don't want that, mm-hmm. some parents do. Um, I think a, a possible solution uh, would be. Um, essentially school vouchers. People get to choose what school they go to. Mm -hmm. uh, And if that school has certain values, not certain values, um, I don't think that somebody should be punished to have to pay out of pocket to go to uh, a private school or or let's say a a Catholic school or um, uh, whatever religion school. Um, Because you pick your religion, you pick your problem with (laughs) with what's being taught. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, I think that that might be, the best solution for it. Um, otherwise, that is a difficult one. Uh, I thought you did a pretty good job of answering it. I don't agree with everything you said. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there are some positions where to change the status quo, maybe the onus should be on the, uh, what you call them, a heckler, the obje- yeah. objection heckler, yeah. um, to, to change the status quo from, from something else. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult to find a situation where everyone as a place at the table mm-hmm. um, without forcing people uh, and invading that. I think that, that there is a certain amount of privacy and uh, autonomy that a family should have. Um, and no one should ever be told what to think right. um, or what not to think. Right. Um, and that's, that's another one of those issues that we're seeing now more, more than ever. Um, people are, not treating each other so good. Right. Now, you said, though, govern- or p- people should not be told what to think. Mm-hmm. Do you recognize for those on the left who view it as, okay, there's some people who are trying to ban content that they don't like. Okay. That the government would then be saying this content is acceptable, these characters, and these characters are not. So it would be the government endorsing what is, you know, what to think, basically. What is acceptable family dynamics or, you know, gender roles, whatever, versus, you know, th- this content that is not, you're then treating it differently. The government would be treating it differently and effectively than telling students this is what's acceptable and the other is not. That's 
that's where the left is, in my view, the ones trying to not. I I, I can't force anybody to view interracial marriage as acceptable. And I'm not trying to force anybody to, like, they can have their opinion. All we both I, agree it's acceptable. Right? Yes, okay. exactly. No, obviously, I use it because it's such a universal, but, you know, 40, 50 years ago, that was one that there was a little bit more division on. Now everybody's come to accept it, basically. But it's one that, what's the difference 50 years ago versus now? We're still people, and it's still interracial marriage. It's just become more acceptable socially. But the idea that what socially may not have total acceptance right now when it comes to LGBT relationships, 50 years from now, they'll likely be treated the same way interracial marriage is treated today, where you'll have some holdouts who still disagree with it. But overall, it'll be something like, yeah, obviously everybody's okay. It, it, you know, it is what I'm expecting it to be in the future. And... So it's the government should be treating those basically the same because if the government's going to treat LGBT couples differently in stories, the the fundamental principles behind it would then also apply to interracial unless it's just a majority rules type situation that you're trying to say, in which case then it's not up to the individual heckler veto, it's, you know, you not a ballot measure, but basically yeah, your your school board votes then are all encompassed, you know, focused on that issue is, okay, as a community, what's our majority say? Do we want this content or not? But how would you feel if all of a sudden you looked around and you were in a community where interracial marriage oh my gosh, you're in the minority, even though you think like everybody, of course, is okay with it. What if all of a sudden you realize you weren't? Is that something that you want to empower the government to be able to restrict in school because you know you just happen to be in the minority in your community in thinking it's no big deal and should be treated the same? I think it's a great example. Uh, I think it's clever. I, uh, <laughs> I have a lot of respect for it. I don't think it's apples to apples, mm-hmm. um, but uh, it's a good one. It's a, it's a great way to get your point across. Um, yeah, I, I like that. 